Now we look at the second solution for ISI. The problem of intersymbol interference, we have seen that we can solve it with pulse shaving. Now we look at the second solution, which is entitled, the second solution, which is entitled controlled ISI. Instead of deleting the ISI, we're going to get control of the ISI. Another name for this is called partial response signaling. We'll cover due binary signaling and due binary with precoding. All right. Now let us recall that the first solution for for ISI or for intersymbol interference was pulse shaping. We have shaped the pulse, like in the case of raised cosine, to get away with the intersymbol interference. The price paid was the bandwidth. So we started with the sync, and we said sync has some impractical solutions. So we went from the sync, the blue curve, into curves with less tail, and the price paid was the bandwidth. This is price is very expensive. So pulse shaping achieves ISI, zero ISI, at the cost of a reduced data rate. Either you increase the bandwidth, or if you want to fix the bandwidth, the price will be paid in terms of less data rate. Now, the question we pose, can we solve the problem with, of ISI without losing bandwidth, without the excess bandwidth? And the answer is yes. How? Using controlled ISI. In controlled ISI, or partial response signaling, we can use different pulse shapes. We'll start with the due binary pulse. We'll see how it works. In controlled ISI, we're not eliminating the ISI. Instead, we are making ISI worse. Usually, the criteria for zero ISI is to have one or response at the pulse of interest, which is usually n equal to zero for, for illustration. And we should have zero for all other instances or all other symbols so we get zero isi now what we did here we said no we remove one of them we said we'll get one not just at the pulse of interest or the bit of interest we'll get also at the next bit so we're introducing the isi under control and this is called due because we have two okay we have, this is called due binary pulse let's see how it works and how does it look in time domain, here is the pulse of interest. Here is the time instant of interest. Okay, usually we, we used sync earlier. What we had now, we're getting one, not just at the time of interest, we're interfering with the next time, which is at one here. So we get one here and one there. Mathematically, again, the expression to get this signal relative to the data rate, RB, this is T, T is the time. So if you, if you sketch this with MATLAB, you get the following blot. Again, at zero, we get one, and at one, we get one. Of course, if you have another bit, the other bit would come here. So it's going to interfere with the next pulse. In frequency domain, okay, in frequency domain, if you do the Fourier transform, you'll find the expression for the Fourier transform is this. And the bandwidth here, okay, equals to the normalized bandwidth in terms of RB. It's 0.5 times RB. So the bandwidth of this pulse is as good as sync. It does not require more bandwidth because the maximum frequency is RB over 2 or 0.5 times RB. So we're not increasing the bandwidth, but now we have to prove that this is going to give us zero ISI. Yeah. Uh, here is just the code of MATLAB, the MATLAB code in, ca in case you want to get the two sketches. I'm just I'm just plotting the equations. Now let's look at possible amplitudes for the case of um, due binary pulses. For the case of due binary pulses, we can have different scenarios. If you have two positive, I mean we have one and one, then because of the due binary, you're going to send one here, one here. The second bit will be one and one. Those two ones are going to interfere with each other. So we, the resultant of these two bits is what we get here. And this value 
one, then goes to two. The reason it goes to two because we're having two consecutive ones, then it goes back to zero. Here we have one, two, and then one. Another scenario, if you have both of them are negative, which means you are sending zero, for example, so you'll get minus one, minus two, this became minus two because of the interference. These, the red and the same curves, they are overlapping. And then we have minus one. So we are introducing ISI. One other possibility, if you have positive two, positive one, and then negative, the red and then the CN color, the resultant will be one, zero, minus one. So we can summarize this. If two consecutive bits are ones, the received voltage will be two. If two consecutive, uh, if you have two consecutive zeros, the received voltage will be minus two. And if we have one and then minus one, opposite polarity, whether minus uh, zero and then one or one and then zero, the voltage will be zero. So the possible amplitudes are two, minus two, and zero. Of course, with other than the edge, the first bit will, will start with one and the last bit could be one or minus one as well. But all the bits in the middle will be either the voltages, either two or minus two or zero. We we'll only get one or minus one at the edges because there is no interference. Signaling with controlled eye size, also named as partial response signaling, as we show in the title. Now, this is maybe more illustrative. I am showing you a sequence of bits: one, 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 zero, and then one. Because of the controlled ISI, because they are overlapping, they don't take separate times. The resultant of this curve, if you if you add them up, I got the following red curve. At the instant of interest, you either get two, okay, or two, two, you get zero here, zero, okay. Of course, the edges could be one, as I mentioned, but in between it could be either two or minus one. So the question is, well, we note the following. We cannot have, we cannot go from two to minus two or from minus two to two. We have to go by zero. We have to cross through the zero. So this gives give us some error detection capability. Remember, we are finding whether the voltage is plus two, minus two, or zero. But we also cannot have, cannot go from plus or full polarity to another full polarity, from minus two to plus two, or from plus two to minus two. We have to pass by the zero. If you detect something like this, then you declare that there's something wrong. Okay, so we're saying full value of the same polarity will also have even number of zeros between them. And full values, I mean full values which is plus two or minus two, will have always, okay, if they are opposite, you always have odd number of zeros between them. Okay, so if you have, this is not possible, two, zero, zero, minus two is not possible. Because if they are opposite polarity, you should have odd number of ones between them. But this is possible now. If this is plus and plus, we can have an uh, even number between them. So these special cases create some error detection capability in dual binary. Okay, so let's just read the, the notes again. Some advantages for dual binary. We have the minimum required bandwidth, RB over 2. We have the data rate, the decay is even faster than sync. It's 1 over t squared. Uh, it's true that it starts at minus infinity, but it's easier to, to approximate compared with the sink. It has some error detection capability, but of course it introduces some complexity because we are sending, we are controlling the ISI to recover the data, to find out what the data is. We'll see in the next slide how we decode and, and there is some complexity there. Now, let's see an example to see if it's possible really to get the data back because we are introducing ISI, we show you the advantage, but we didn't show how the data can be recovered without ISI. So we'll do this through the example. The example here is shown um, a data sequence, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, 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 and so on. 
So we'll, we'll take you into the stages. So this is the solution for this table to be filled. The first row here is the data. The second row is the two level voltage, which means we have positive for one and minus one for zero. So this line, the way I got this line is directly, I replaced the one with plus voltage, let's say plus one, and the zero with a minus one. Every one is mapped to plus one, every zero is mapped to minus one. So now we have the polar representation of, of the data. Now to create the dual binary signal, to find the voltage levels after the dual binary, we will find out that every bit is going to affect its next bit. So at this stage, one plus one, this is going to be one here and one there. So the voltage level here will be two. Why two? Because we have plus and it's also affected ISI by the previous one. I have zero here because we have minus and then plus from before. Zero because I have plus and minus. Two plus plus. So every value, if you pick this value, it's zero because we have two different polarities here. So the receiver is not going to receive one, one, minus one. It's going to receive this sequence. Okay. Now, of course, as I said, the edge in the beginning, you could have one or minus one, but this is not important because usually we have huge data rate, like 100 megabits per second. In one second, we'll have hundreds of millions of bits. Okay. Now, uh, this story I'm just showing you, uh, Just this is this is illustration. It's not important. Just saying that I'm using colors here. This positive is going to affect itself and the next one. Okay. This plus one is going to show up at this time instant and also the next time instant. Minus one is going to show up here and here and so on. So if you want the, the net voltage, either you do it like this, you say that zero is coming because of plus and minus, or you can just add this together. If you're not, if you don't like this two columns or two rows, you can just remove them. What we want you to know is that any voltage level received will be the result of the current bit and the previous one. Okay, now, how the receiver is going to decode the bits because we have twos and ones. Can you find a relation between these two? Can you find a relation between these two? Can we go from here to here? Can you find the decoding role? If somebody give you this, can you find a relation with the original data? Okay. I can see, for example, here that two always comes with one. Minus two always come with zero. But zero is sometime come with zero. So what does zero mean? We can come up with a decoding role by saying the decoding role is the relation between the, the due binary received bits. I will have, if I have plus two, it means I have one or no change. And if I have, if I have minus two, it means I have zero. This is direct. Okay, but if I have zero, it means the bit is going to change from the previous one. Let's start. Assume the first one is one. So now I receive voltage two, I will say it's one. Zero, it means this bit has changed now, it should have to be zero. Another zero, I'm going to make a change. It's going to be one. Two is going to be one. So all minus minuses will give you a zero, all or no change, and all twos is going to give you ones. Whenever you have zero, you flip. So it was one, now zero, I'm going to change the one into zero. Zero again, change the zero into one. Two means no change, keep the bits as is. So it's possible to decode. Although there is one problem here that we are dependent on the change. So we have to do a solution for this. Okay, now we notice that dual binary solved the problem of ISI. We can decode, but there is one problem. Error propagates. What does that mean? It means the decoding role depends on the change. It says change the previous bit. What if we made one mistake? When we make the change, it means the error is going to propagate. It will move from one bit to another because we're relying, when we make a decision, on the previous bit. To solve this problem, we are doing uh, our problem is the decoding is differential. It depends on the difference. 
and this cause error to propagate. What's the solution? The solution is called differential precoding. Precoding because it's done before transmission, so it's called precoding before going to the DU binary. So, uh, what does precoding mean? It means if I have one da data, I will send identical I previously transmitted bits. If I have zero, I'm going to introduce a change. Okay, this will become clear when we come to the table in the example. So precoding, the precoded sequence will be the result will be insensitive to, to polarity change. Okay, and uh, we'll start with the example here. This is the same sequence we had before, but I added one row. This row is the precoding row. Okay, so according to precoding row, one since identical like previous transmission, zero change. So if I have one here, let me just use the number here. If I have one, it means send identical. The previous transmission was one. I will send one. Zero, it means I'm going to change. I'll make zero. One, uh, send identical. Zero, zero, one, zero, one, one. So whenever I have one, I keep the, the previous data. Zero, I'm going to make a change. Zero, 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 zero. All right? Now everything will become the same as before for the two level. So um, you can see here you can match my solution with the, with the one in the table. You can see here that we have, um, this is exactly this. What comes next is two level. Now I will not work with the data, I'll work with the pre-coded data. So one will be positive, zero will be negative, okay? And now, when the due binary, how do you find the due binary? How do you find this row? Okay, zero because we have plus one and minus one. Zero because we have minus and plus. Why we have two here? Because we had plus and plus. So the due binary add the current polarity with the previous one to find the voltage. The receiver is going to receive this. Now I'm asking you, what is the precoding? How can you find a relation between this and the previous and the data itself? Okay. The answer is, whenever we have minus 2 or plus 2, the answer is always going to be 1. And whenever there is 0, the data is going to be 0. So the decoding rule is minus 2 or plus 2 give you 1, 0 give you 0. There is no dependence on the previous data. So the decoding rule is becoming easier. It's an advantage. 0 give you 0, minus 2 or plus 2 give you 1. So what we have done with precoding, this is due binary plus uh, precoding plus due binary. We have made the decoding easier. We have avoid the problem of error propagation. Of course, at the cost of required precoding at the transmitter. Now, uh, this is um, we have covered controlled ISI with uh, due binary pulses, and also looked at precoding with due binary. Now, uh, and this is in this slide. You will, I'm sharing the slide in the next video. It shows you how we started with uh, sending impulses, then we go, we went into pulses. We found that there is ice eye problem. We, we introduced the solution of sync. Then we went from sync because of the large tail into uh, raised cosine. This is the first solution for ice eye was pulse shaping, and then we found that this is required raised cosine waste bandwidth. We went from there into the DU binary pulses. We found that DU binary pulses achieves zero ISI with minimum bandwidth. However, it introduced error propagation. Then we went into uh, DU binary pulses with precoding. These are the main solutions. Uh, this slide is uh, clearly explained in a next video, in a five minutes video. So thank you for paying attention.